Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. I've been thinking a lot about AI and how it will affect software development. Like many developers, I've been wondering, will it replace development jobs or will developers just use it as a tool to be more productive? I think the answer is probably both. Now, as a developer, you might have already seen some of the productivity gains, possibly if you've been using something like, which is probably the most popular that people have probably tried, is GitHub Copilot. There's also, I've used Amazon's Code Whisper in AWS, and because I'm a fan of JetBrains products and their IDEs, which I also use, they just released the JetBrains AI Assistant. Now, as I was talking about kind of my personal experience using these tools and productivity, I wanna make sure that you leave a comment to let me know yours, and if you've had the kind of a different or similar experience, is that when using something like Copilot or Code Whisper, sometimes I'm like, this is just getting in the way. The code it's generating sometimes it doesn't feel uh, the way I would write it, it's sometimes off a little bit. And then if I am using it, I'm going back and fixing things. And then if I'm fixing things, sometimes I'm wondering, okay, I should just did this little snippet to begin with and write it myself. Then there are other times where I'm like, holy crap, I can't believe it just produced that. That's amazing. And my mind is blown. Now, before I give you my opinion where I think this industry is going with AI tooling, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. Now, I've only been using JetBrains AI Assistant for a very brief amount of time here, but being able to prompt it about the code that I'm looking at in that context for it to explain to me what a particular function does as the example has been really great in terms of what it's returning back to me so far. Same thing, being able to tell it, can you write a test under this circumstance for this particular function? And the results so far have been really encouraging. It's kind of giving me a good starting point. Now there's one major issue and that's context. Yes, it understands the context of the code. It can produce code, it can understand code, but there's some of this that goes beyond the code in your domain. So issues are here is why does something exist the way it does? Why is there code that produces some type of result? Why is it written the way it's written? That, unfortunately, it does not understand that context. And I'm not saying it won't be able to in the very near future, it likely will, but you still have to be able to produce it and give it that context. And we can currently do things like that right now with ADRs, architecture decision records, to explain why the decisions we're making in code, why your system is built the way it is, and why certain things are done. But you need to be able to provide that why. Now I can totally see the tooling productivity part. Sure, we already can get that right now. But what about kind of the replacement of jobs? How does that fit in? Well, I think it depends on how you view yourself in your role as a developer, and also how others view your role and what they think you're, what you do, what your value is. If they think what you do is just produce code, if you are a code producing machine that takes, for example, Jira tickets and just implements them as is, then yeah, I can see there being some squeezing out of those types of roles. Maybe not all of them, because you still need somebody to prompt to actually at least look at the code in the context. Sure, it can understand the context, but if you need to make a change to some type of behavior and you can just prompt and make that code change automatically, then yeah, I could see that kind of squeezing out those types of needs for those types of roles. But if your role is viewed by you and others differently and that it's not just a code producing machine, but there's design involved, there's thought about what the actual use cases are, all of that is entails of what you're doing a developer, then code is a means to an end to implement that, to fulfill that. But it isn't necessarily the bottleneck. Now I love using this graphic when I refer to domain driven design, and this is from the DDD crew. I love it because it emphasizes the strategic part, the design of what you're actually building. And you can see on the very far right, code is the end of that. So when we're talking about domain driven design, a lot of people get so focused on the code part. They love the tactical patterns of entities, value objects, aggregates, all these things. And yeah, sure, they're great, but they're just a part of the whole process. They're a part of everything. You see here on the very left, there's the business model and the user's needs. There's discovery. What are we actually trying to implement? Decomposing your system into subdomains. Strategizing, okay, where actually is the core domain? Where do we actually get value of what we're gonna implement? And what are our supporting boundaries? How do these things all connect? What data has to flow from kind of one boundary to another? Having these teams that are gonna deal with these boundaries, what are these bounded contexts gonna look like? What problems do they actually solve? Then you have code. So yeah, I think AI will be definitely used as a tool 
to be more productive because it already is. Now on the side of job elimination or taking over jobs, I do think it's actually gonna happen and squeeze out some of the rules that are strictly just there for producing code. You're just typing away, pumping out code. I think that why wouldn't it be uh, replaced by AI if it can understand the context of code and if it can replace and just write code. So somebody has to be giving it the details of what to do and why you're doing it. Like I mentioned with designing a system, how things are separated, how you're defining boundaries, where the value is, understanding how things connect and connecting those things is still all very technical. It's not physically producing the code, but it's all still very technical about how you're building a system. But ultimately, I have no idea. I'd love to hear your thoughts. These are just my opinions. I have no idea where this is going, but I'd love to hear your thoughts to so make sure to leave a comment. If you wanna chat with other software developers about topics like this and software architecture design, where the industry is going, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. Check the links in the description on how to join. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure you leave a comment. Please like this video as well, and I'll see you next time in the next video. Thanks.